Welcome to this uh, wrap up of our DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdowns. And today we are not covering a node. I just uh, primarily want to go over a few things we haven't gone over because there are a handful of nodes that I am not covering daily breakdowns. So I'll hit those real quick. But first, I want to thank everyone for being amazing community and our members and our subscribers. And I really appreciate it. We've gone like a year and uh, that's like 350 plus videos I've done every single day for the past year. And you guys have hung in there and had some amazing uh, input. And for those of you that are new to the channel and for those of you that are old to the channel, I really appreciate it. But we uh, had a rocky start because if you remember right, we started right after Hurricane Helene devastated my area. So the background music was a little loud to cover the sound of chainsaws and trucks in our background. But we slowly was able to uh, minimize our music over time as that uh, hurricane cleanup came to an end. So I appreciate you all hanging in during that uh, annoying time of uh, background noise and for most of you understanding the point to these node breakdowns because the whole point to these node breakdowns is not to actually teach you to do something it's not meant to be a tutorial and i know uh, i've got a lot of comments about uh hey this tutorial didn't show me well it's not meant to be a tutorial these are node breakdowns meaning if i was teaching you how to build a house i wouldn't just show you how to build a house and assume you're going to understand everything the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the tools in the toolbox. So every single node is a tool in the toolbox. Once you know all the tools, then we can start building our house. So in future videos, um, one priority is going to be uh, knocking out some of these member requested tutorials. So we'll be doing those. So if you're not a member, remember to join and you can request tutorials and I will create tutorials for whatever you want tutorials on, depending on what it is. Additionally, I'm going to start with our basic Fusion 101 training. So we're going to dig in and see how to actually use Fusion, use all the nodes we learned how to use, and uh, build some cool stuff. Additionally, I'll be doing some more advanced tutorials. And with that, I will spend less time talking about the nodes and more time actually building the flow and doing what we got to do to create something. But you guys will understand the nodes I'm bringing in because, of course, you watched all of our node breakdowns. So some of these nodes I haven't covered. We've got two nodes within the uh, particle system and one is the P custom node. And if you remember right, the last few days we went over our custom tools and our custom vertex 3D node. And these two are pretty much the same thing, but on the particle level. So the reason I'm not going to do a node breakdown is because I have never used any of these nodes I have up here. And the main reason is, is not that they're bad nodes, they're extremely intuitive nodes, but I use Houdini for all my particle systems. And Fusion can't quite get the interaction that you can get within Houdini. Because Houdini, we can do different things like uh, editing our attributes or transferring our different attributes from one thing to another. And we can also use it within uh, different modeling systems. So, for example, on this little film thing I did real quick just as a test, all of this dust and everything was done in Houdini. Actually, this entire project was done in Houdini. But... You can see all this dust from this bike blowing down the air, interacting with the ground. And the dust is actually interacting with not just the ground, but with the bike itself. And when it comes to a stop, the dust still interacts with the bike. It interacts with our character. The smoke interacts with the bike. So this is all stuff you can do in Houdini. And plus you can do different particle system stuff like this. In addition to that, all this cloth um, sim right here, all the dust interacts with the cloth. The cloth interacts with the dust. Everything interacts with everything. And it's all done through nodes. So this is why I use Houdini for all this stuff and not Fusion. Because it's a powerhouse when it comes to interactive particles, interactive uh, fluid. And you just name it, it's all interactive. Whereas in Fusion, it's basic stuff. It's not bad, but it's basic stuff. But you can use things like the P custom node to interact with different things, but you really need to know math. Because the way this node, the P custom node is set up, 
It's kind of like our custom tools, but we do all of our uh, expressions within this particle tab right here. And you can see there's a lot of expressions when it comes to particles. And then it's all based off our conditions as well as our regions that we learned about in our particle systems. And same with P custom force node, instead of uh, the particles, it's based off particle force. And there's a lot of math that goes into this to make things happen. So I have never used them, but just so you know, we have the P custom node and the P custom force node to use with our particle systems. Additionally, all of these nodes right here, I have never used because they're all for stereophonic footage or VR footage, and I don't do VR footage, and I've never in my production career done a 3D movie, and not 3D like 3D assets. I mean, like the 3D where you use 3D glasses and things come at you from the screen. I've never done that, and that's what these nodes are for, for VR and for uh, 3D movies. And I was thinking about maybe getting a camera so I can mess around with some of this stuff, but if we look, Black Magic's got one that starts out at $33,000 for an immersive 3D camera. So I said, never mind. Anyway, within all these nodes, so like I said, these are all stereophonic nodes or stereo nodes. And to be able to do this, you need to use 3D glasses while you're working, or you need a VR headset connected to Fusion and DaVinci to be able to see what's going on. But we have the anaglyph, and what the anaglyph node is used for is it creates stereophonic images by combining separate left and right eye images. And it's usually used at the end of your node tree when you're doing the stereo stuff. The combiner node will take two separate stereophonic inputs and it creates a stacked image with the left eye and the right eye. Your disparity node will allow you to uh, shift your left and right eyes to be correct within your stereo pair. Your disparity to Z, this is used if you have a uh, 3D camera with existing uh, disparity information. So you would input that disparity information from your camera and it would correct your left and right eye. Global align is just meant to be a fast and convenient way to do a simple stereo alignment for both the X and the Y as well as uh, rotation down here. The new eye node will construct a new image by interpolating between two existing stereo images and using the embedded disparity channels. The splitter node is going to take a stacked image input, basically a image created by a combiner node, and it's going to provide two outputs for your left and your right eye. So you notice there's two outputs, left and right eye. The stereo line node will help you align in and fix any issues with your stereo image. And your Z to disparity will uh, take a stereo camera and an image containing the Z channel and output the same image, but with the disparity channels in it. So like I said, I have never used these and I'm not even gonna attempt to break them down one, I don't have a stereo footage. Two, I don't have VR or a way to view stereo footage correctly. And uh, I don't want to lead you all astray and pretend I know something I don't know. So I'm sure if you Google or uh, search YouTube, you'll be able to find plenty of uh, information on all these stereo nodes and how to use them with VR. And as far as these P Custom and P Custom Force, if you find a very smart friend who knows how to code and do some crazy math stuff, they will probably be able to help you with this. So I will not see you in the next node breakdown, but going forward, like I said, our party is going to be uh, member tutorials and Fusion 101 basics. So we'll be covering all basic Fusion stuff, i.e. all the menu systems, how to do different stuff within our nodes. We will be covering uh, animation and how to use our spline editor. And we'll be uh, going over some in-depth stuff when it comes to uh, actually creating things and using our modifiers. So I will see you guys in the next tutorial.